Hey everyone, it's Jensen. Today is Tuesday, September 29th. And from an update on Amy Coney Barrett, President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, to exactly what happened in Governor Mike DeWine's latest coronavirus press conference, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's get an update on those latest coronavirus numbers. Today, there were 1,105 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21-day average of 996. There were 37 new coronavirus-related deaths reported compared to the 21-day average of 23. There were 106 new hospitalizations compared to 69 and 13 new ICU admissions compared to that 21-day average of 11. And Putnam County jumped back up to the top of DeWine's list, ranking all 88 counties in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. The county was reported to have 286.5 cases per 100,000 people over the last two weeks. Wood County jumped up the list as well to the fifth spot after staying out of the top 10 for a number of weeks. Wood reportedly had 203.3 cases per 100,000, more than double the CDC threshold of 100. And Henry County also stuck around in the top 10 in the ninth spot with 174 cases per 100,000 people. And Ohio Representative John Becker filed a private citizen affidavit in Claremont County accusing Governor Mike DeWine of a lot of things relating to his response to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the case will not be pursued by the prosecutor. The 10 accusations include seven felonies, including engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity, complicity, terrorism, making terroristic threats, inducing panic, conspiracy, bribery, and three misdemeanors, which are interfering with civil rights, coercion, patient abuse, or neglect. Becker accused DeWine of violating the separation of powers doctrine by directing, allowing, colluding, and or conspiring with the Ohio Department of Health to issue continuous orders outside the scope of its rulemaking authority. And he claims DeWine intimidated, coerced, and caused serious public inconvenience, alarm, and fear by placing Ohioans under house arrest in March and forced them to wear face coverings. The affidavit calls for an arrest warrant to be issued for DeWine, but on Monday afternoon, Claremont County Prosecutor D. Vincent Ferris said, I have reviewed the paperwork and do not find a basis for the filing of a complaint pursuant to this private citizen's affidavit. And when asked for a comment on those accusations, DeWine's office released this statement. If this were serious, I would have a comment. Because it is patently absurd, I do not. So there you have it. Uh, but let's look a little bit more locally here. The Toledo Police Department is hosting a blood drive in honor of the life and service of the late officer Anthony Dia. The blood drive will be this Thursday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. at TPPA Union Hall on Franklin Avenue. To make an appointment, just go to the American Red Cross website and use the code DIA2755. Again, that's DIA2755. You're asked to wear a mask inside the blood drive and practice social distancing. And today, President Donald Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett, met up with Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and other pivotal Republican senators like Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham as they make their push to get her confirmed before the November 3rd election. Joined by Vice President Mike Pence, McConnell said he was glad to welcome Barrett and get the process started. Democrats are fighting against the nomination and have said they won't meet with Barrett, who is expected to be confirmed for the seat held by the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg by the end of October. Barrett didn't make any sort of public remark before her day full of meet and greets, which is traditionally part of the whole confirmation process. Hearings of the Judiciary Committee are set to begin on October 12th, and that's just two weeks away, so we'll keep you posted on all of that. And President Donald Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden will face off tonight in their first presidential debate in Cleveland. The topics for tonight were selected by the debate's moderator, Fox News, Chris Wallace, and will each be the subject of 15-minute blocks of the debate. The topics are the Trump and Biden records, the Supreme Court, COVID-19, the economy, race and violence in our cities, and the integrity of the election. But those topics are subject to change. How can you watch? Well, we will have it on WTL 11, as well as all of our platforms, including WTL.com, our free news app, our Facebook page, our YouTube page. So you have some options, right? And before I go, let's talk about something fun. If this doesn't get you in the mood for a spooky season, I don't know what will. The first of two October full moons will be this Thursday with an orange harvest moon and that second full moon, yeah, that's gonna be a blue moon and it comes on Halloween night. How fitting for 2020. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and you subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.